Hello, good day, and welcome to Psychic Talk with Priscilla Gendron. I'm your host, and we are very pleased and excited to have back an amazing woman from New York, our very special friend, Jennifer Alden. And she's coming to talk to us more about backflowers. And we just uh, scratched the surface on um, the things that she knows. And here we are about to delve a little bit deeper into everything that the backflower remedies can do for us as human beings. Welcome, Jennifer. Oh, thank you, Priscilla. I'm very happy to be back. Thank you for it's asking. Lovely to, have, lovely to have you back again. So as before, we, we sort of like backtrack a little bit in terms of um, maybe go into a little bit more in depth into the history and philosophy of Dr. Dr. Buck. Can you tell us a little bit more about that and um, you know, maybe delve a little bit deeper into that because we just scratched the surface in terms of the history and philosophy before. Oh, very good. Thank you. Um, well, Dr. Bach worked in the 1930s in England, and he was a medical doctor, a homeopathic physician, a bacteriologist, a surgeon, and a medical researcher. He, at his time, was very well known as a homeopathic physician for discovering uh, something called nosos, which treated intestinal uh, toxemia. And they're actually still being used today by homeopathic physicians. And he, in his hospital days, he was very concerned about the people and the patients as people. He started to observe them and wondered if their emotional outlook created their health picture. And he kept that idea in the back of his head throughout his medical career. And at a certain point, uh, he was working in Harley Street. He had a private practice and he also had a laboratory that he employed other doctors to do medical research. And at a certain point, he decided there's something else to do. He was trying always to find a medicine combination that would go to the core and help us change and in, in some ways help get to the core of illness. So he tried many different methods. As a homeopathic physician, he knew Materia Medica, he knew the plant situations. He was very well trained in this. So he decided to go back into nature. And he said, there's something there that I can find that will really, yeah, really help us. So what he did one day, he was walking in the fields and he noticed the dew on the flowers. And he said, that has a really strong power. It has the sun, the earth, the air, the fire that essence within the plants and the flowers have a very strong healing power. So he, he discovered a way of extracting that from the branches, the leaves and the flowers to create what we now know as a flower essence. And as he went to discover each of the chosen flowers, which took him about eight years to do, and he wandered hundreds of miles all through the Welsh and the English countryside. And, and then he would potentize them in this particular method, the sun method or the boiling method, depending upon the weather. And then he would give those to patients depending upon their mental state of mind and their emotional state of mind and emotional personality. And he was having great success. So people found out about it. They, they knew, they figured out where he was because <laughs> he was a known doctor in his day, you know? People would seek him out and um, they he moved to um, where they are now um, and established a house and he had a um, assistant more than an assistant really she saw his work from the beginning her name is Nora Weeks she wrote a beautiful very detailed book on doc, the discovery of the box flower remedies and Dr. Bach's actual work and background, which I highly recommend anybody reading because she wrote it really beautifully. But she worked with him from actually the beginning. He, he met her in the hospital when he was doing his hospital work. She was a radiologist and asked him to join her in his work in finding this new medicine. So, and she agreed. So she set up the house, she set up the business, she set up the practice and she ran it from then on. And when he passed away, she became the curator of the remedies. And he trained her from recognizing the flowers from the seeds to making a mixing bottle for someone and doing, you know, consultations. 
and she's a wonderful, amazing woman. There's there's really great photographs of her out at the Box Center. Um, if you go online there, her book is exceptional. It's it's still in print today from when she wrote it, and it really gives a very clear understanding of where these came from. His philosophy was really based on a lot of different things. He really saw people as healed. That's the thing that I find remarkable when I read his his um, Heal Thyself and Free Thyself, his text on, on medicine and the future of medicine. He wrote things about that the hospitals of the future will be places of healing. They'll be quiet. They'll be beautiful. We won't be taking the temperature all the time. We'll look at the personality of the patient. We'll look at their compositions. We'll look at other things and help uplift them to bring them to health. He wanted people to feel that they could be uplifted and they could actually be healthy. He was very concerned in his day of people getting bored, um, losing faith, losing confidence, you know, um, having people make them feel small or insignificant. You know, he was concerned about all these relationships and how those negative aspects create a situation that opens the door to physical and emotional illness. And he was very clear about in his writings that he understood the heart and he understood the importance of the heart and the inputs of connecting our minds and our hearts with our spirit. Um, and he was, he wrote a lot about connecting to our purpose, our soul's purpose. He was very wanting people to find their soul's purpose and be happy in the world. No matter, he said, no matter what you're doing, whether you're a boot black, whether you're running a business, whether you're working in a shop, whatever you're doing, see if you can do it with some joy in your life. He was very concerned that people weren't finding enough joy in their lives, you know, and it's a slightly different language when you read his books because it's the language of the day, you know, but yeah. he was really concerned that people were not being actually happy, you know? And and they weren't find they weren't connecting to their spiritual selves. He wrote a lot about this in his writings and his philosophy of medicine. And he basically saw that the things of impatience, of depression, of fears, and all the things that beset us, he said conversely to that is joy, hope, certainty, um love and those are the real pathways to healing you know and he, he he suggested in his books that you bring in the qualities of gentleness of steadfastness of joy of love in your life any you know the ways that you can and then yes. he said when you bring in the higher vibrations of things the higher frequency of things sometimes it's easier to change a pattern when you bring in the higher frequency of something than when you fight the pattern all the time. So when you bring in the higher frequency of things and you bring in the joy and the love and the prosperity, then you have a chance to wash out the negative patterns that you might be experiencing and put a positive virtue in his language to a negative situation. That was one of his suggestions. He wrote about that all the time, you know, that sometimes you can't fight something. So you want to say, I won't be mean. I won't be mean. I won't be mean. He said, that's fine. But sometimes you'll slip and you will forget not to be mean. But if you start thinking about kindness, generosity, helpfulness, the things that dismantle the energy of the mean part, and you try to put those in your life, you know, they can wash away the negative aspect of what you're dealing with. You might have a better chance. Your mind and your willpower will do something, he said. But sometimes you have to add another element to help yourself really find these other more joyful ways of being. Does exactly. that make any sense? Yeah, I, I know. I know what you mean. It, it, it exactly makes quite a lot of sense because um, we do. We've been living in the society that's so geared up to the mania of of life, and 
And I think that over the last about say 10 to 15 years, we've really taken a step back and really tried to embrace a much more holistic approach to life and a life filled with happiness and contentment and peace and grace and things like that. So it has helped. And by using that in a sense, because if you look at the history of uh, flowers and, and herbs and things like that, we're looking at hundreds, if not thousands of years of history of it being used when we didn't have modern technology or things like that. You know, 200 years ago, we didn't have antibiotics and, and you know, IV therapy and, and all that sort of stuff. But we had those flowers and we had those plants that were used by the professionals of the day to, you know, facilitate the healing as well. Yes, that's completely true. I mean, Ayurvedic medicine, that goes back thousands of years. Chinese and Tibetan medicine goes back 5,000 years. The first human being that ever walked the grass and picked up something and ate it, there you have plant medicine. You know, we're so encoded to, and we have such a thousands of years relationship with flowers. And we have a thousands and thousands of years relationship with our plants and our vegetables. That's why the, the health movements today who um, want to switch people to you know a plant-based diet and a plant-based planet to save the soil and save the air and be more sustainable. There's a real, if you think about human beings, we love these things forever, you know? And, and when we take them, I think one of the reasons that they work is because we have this long standing energy relationship with these beings, you know? And that's why I think the remedies are such a wonderful system to bring us back to our personal balance because we can, thinking about bringing myself joy, bringing myself patience, bringing myself generosity, bringing myself loving kindness, bringing myself courage. We have an opportunity to give that to ourselves and our families on a daily basis. And all the Bach flower remedies address 38 and more of our emotional states of mind. And you choose the remedies based on where you are now. So say someone's, someone's <clears throat> emailing me to get a consultation. I will set up an appointment, an hour appointment with them, and we will chat about their life and what's going on and the things they're concerned about. So together we'll form a mixing bottle of one to six remedies or seven remedies that they need for both their immediate need because the, the beauty of the system is you can address something right now. You wake up in the morning, you're really tired, you don't wanna face the day, you can take hornbeam. You know, or if you discover under, once you take the hornbeam, and you go back to your personal balance, something else peels away like layers of an onion. You can think about it and how we are constructed, how our emotions and our mental health is constructed. It's like peeling layers of an onion. One thing gets revealed and goes back to balance. And maybe there's something else underneath it. Maybe you were tired because you got yelled at. Maybe yeah. you were tired because ruling out a, a, a medical issue or something else. Maybe you were tired because you felt you couldn't handle that thing. You didn't have enough confidence to do that, but you're still in a situation where you have to do it. And you get tired because you get, your lack of confidence diminishes your energy and your thinking processes and your organization processes. Does, does, that, does that sound like a, a pattern, a, a pattern of approach? It definitely does. I mean, you know, we, we... We tend to always just look at, okay, what's wrong with you physically? You know, uh, let's do loads of tests and let's do a scan and an x-ray and take blood and things like that. But, um, you know, one of the most prolific things in our society today is stress and the effects that it has on the body. Now, now stress in itself is not um, a physical condition like diabetes or, you know, heart disease or things like that but it's a huge contributing factor to all those conditions. And so our bodies go through all of that. So you're right in the sense of like, find the root cause of it, where it's coming from, 
whether I was not confident or very stressed out or I've been put too much pressure on me to work harder or do things um, more intensely. Um, and that way you're fixing the stress, which alleviates the physical symptoms. Yes, definitely, without a doubt. And the box law remedies are designed to help us address our stress. That's really what they're designed to do. Here's a modern word for it. They're really here to help address our stress in our emotional stress, our mental stress. And once we go back to balance, our personal balance, because the remedies were beautifully designed for each of us. So um, I might wake up in the morning and I, I'm i feeling out of sorts with myself. You know, I'm feeling grumpy, you know, and, and I don't want to do something. I might take Elm for overwhelm. Somebody else wakes up in the morning, doesn't want to get out of bed, doesn't want to face the day, is feeling kind of grumpy but to themselves. They might take, again, as I mentioned before, hornbeam to restore um, your energy when you, you can't face your day, when there are things to do. Overwhelm and not wanting to face the day are actually very different things. So they require different energies. Um, let's see what else is something that comes up. People um, get afraid. And fear is something that is really, especially in the last three years, we've all been pressured and compressed with fear, you know, especially in, during the pandemic. People, exp I experienced fear here that I've never experienced in my life, you know, exactly. being in a mandated city in New York. And some fears you can name, like let's take the pandemic as, as, a, as an example. You People didn't want to go outside. They were afraid that all the molecules in the air would make them sick. They were afraid to talk to people. Um, they were afraid to cough. They were afraid that everything is going to turn into an illness. Or if you didn't do the right thing, you know, maybe if I went into the shop and I forgot to wear a mask, I would I would get arrested. You know, it was that type of really severe compression of yes. fear. But these fears are named fears, they're known things. But underneath that, people were also feeling edgy, uncertain, um, scared, but they couldn't name the fear, like nightmare fears, like walking into a room and feeling very uncomfortable, but you can't see why. It's still a fear. You're still yeah. being who you're having the the bracing yourself against something, but it's an unknown fear. The unknown fear would be Aspen. The known fears that I just named would be Mimulus. The category is fear, but the relationship to how you're experiencing that fear and how it's manifesting in your life as a daily relationship is different. Yes. So the combinations you can make out of the box 38 is endless because they address every level of what we're going through and different combinations that we can put together um, to help us find our path and get our emotional and mental balance back. So when you take Mimulus, you move to courage. So you become courageous and you can face the things that you're afraid of. So you can go outside, you can talk to people. You know, you can get on the subway. You can walk out on the street. Um, Aspen, when you take it, the edginess goes away. You know, the unknown feeling of Ugh, goes away. You know, it it gently retunes you. Um, it, one way to think about it in using the remedies is if you have a guitar and the guitar has strings on it. You have all the world's music in that guitar. But how do you get to the music? You tune it and you have to have harmony within all the strings to play that music. And the remedies themselves are like retuning the guitar strings and bringing a harmony between thing, things, your emotion and your mental health inside of you. So you can think about it in terms of music. It's one way of viewing it, you know. Um, so we tried as a practitioner, I help the person 
talk and see what they need. And then together we make them a formula of a mixing bottle and they take that for a certain amount of time. Then they come back and we do follow-ups. I personally like to do like three follow-ups with people because then we can track what's going on and we can see their healing, their healing flowering, so to speak. <laughs> we can see they're, well, they're on the right combination. They can hear them exactly. progress, you know? And what I also like to do in my way of working with people is I like to share the indications of the remedies so they know what they're taking. When they leave, they have an understanding of what they're doing and potentially where we're going with this. You know, um, I feel from my experience, both my own way of being a person using these remedies for so many decades, that it's helped me to describe my emotions better. We talked about this before is, is how do you achieve in this world right now, emotional resilience, flexibility, but how do you actually speak your mental health and your emotions? You know, we've been, oh, so much of us who's gone through the lockdowns and the pressures of those things, got mm -hmm. things got suppressed in people. Exactly. And I think that people need to be very gentle with themselves when they go through their healing processes, but they need whatever healing process they're going through, whether they're doing medicines, chemical medicines, homeopathy, nutrition, diet, exercise, trying to stop smoking, trying to sleep better, trying to study better, you know, all these kinds of things. You need to address your emotional mental health. That's a key component to whatever thing you're doing in your life. Um, that will help whatever new thing you're trying to put into your life go better. You know, your healing success will be more when you address your fears, when you address your lack of confidence, when you address spacing out, when you address being bored, when you address, oh my God, I really have no energy. What in the world is this? You know, all these things that come at us from us to us and us to the world can be rebalanced, retuned, like if you think of the guitar, um, through the through the system of the Bach flower remedies. Yeah, exactly. And I think what we what what you are certainly trying to do is to um, invoke um, people to become their own healers and and give them the self empowerment that they need to go forward within their own lives because we we are the only people that know what's best for our body and how to fix it. Yes, okay, we may have to go to a professional here and there, but um, if we tap into the energy of our bodies, we can fix it in that way as well. Yes, we can. And I think people are really around the world discovering that, which is a wonderful thing. The world is really being opened up to vital force and living energy and what you do and, and you introducing people to psychics and how that works and doing the other talks that people give. People are really embracing wanting to know what else is there and how am I connected to the universe and that I am connected to the universe and I can heal. You know, these things people didn't knew about, but it's because of the internet and because we're seeing our world as a unified planetary being, um, which is a wonderful concept. And that's also what people are starting to see and understand now that we have to take care of her. All these things that are happening now really help people understand that they can be their own healer. And that's what also Dr. Buck spoke about in his day. You know, he trained people to use the remedies. He spoke, he lectured, he wrote. He had a, he had a, a core staff that was at the Buck Center and they, they did consultations. Seeing a professional like I am in the remedies is incredibly helpful. You know, yes, yes, the system is there and you can use it yourself. You can walk into a shop, read the indications, go, hmm, okay. Um, okay, that bottle says help with clarity. Okay, I guess I'm kind of spacing out and not forgetting things. I can't remember where my keys are. I can't remember where they turned off the stove. You know, I really prefer just to be sitting here and not doing anything. Well, Okay, I'll try that. I'll try clematis for clarity, you know, for mental clarity. 
to not be spaced out, to not be foggy minded, to um, not to be in a dream state more than an awake state, you know, dreaming more than being present to yourself. Um, exactly. You know, or you see something that says, I, I just, I don't know what to do. I think it's this. I think it's that. I know my life is really like a mess, but I don't know how to fix it. But I never can make up my mind. So there's a remedy directly to help you get you back to mental balance so you can make up your mind about things. Some people are like that. They just can't make up their mind. This seems yeah. right. That seems right. This seems right. And they go back and forth and back and forth and back and forth and back and forth. Right. There's scleranthus. When you take scleranthus, it helps bring your mind to a midpoint level. So you can look at the world and you can help you make a decision. So yes, you can do that. And I spent 10 years giving demos and trainings through New York City, New Jersey, Long Island, Queens, and all the five boroughs and beyond in stores, setting up a table and discussing box hours with customers. I did that for 10 years. And it was a fabulous, wonderful experience because I got to see what people needed. And I got to hear people's stories about how they actually improved with the remedies. You know, someone came to me and said, oh yeah, I took some gorse and now I feel joy. Well, gorse remedy is when you just can't find joy in your life and there's like a dark cloud hanging over you. You know, Al is really fabulous. Somebody like found joy. I mean, like, whoa, you know, that's amazing. The dark clouds cleared for them in their own way and they felt joy. better. I mean, like, that was really awesome. I mean, that was like, that's one of my favorites. Um, but there's hundreds and hundreds of situations that I came across when I was doing this for 10 years that people took them, chose them, got back into balance and lived their lives and had better relationships. There's, there's, you know, we all talk about today about wholesome relationships, whole relationships, whole foods, whole medicine, wholesome relationships, wholesome family conversations, wholesome relationships between your partners. Well, you have in the Buck Remedies a pathway to find your wholesomeness, you know, to meet your direct and long-term needs. Um, if you can't figure it out or you um, want to talk to a practitioner, absolutely go find us. Find me, find other people. The Box Center has a list of practitioners. We're literally all over the world. Yeah. It's, they're really, we're, we're really easy to find, actually. You just have to go on the Box Center, look us up and you know, make contact. And with me, you just have to email me and we'll set up an appointment and we'll do an hour consultation. And together we'll find your remedies and then you can go buy the remedies, you know, or if for some reason you in a situation where you can't buy them, I can include them in the consultation and mail them to you. When I do mail remedies though, in their personal mixing bottles, which I have a handy dandy one right here. I don't know if you can see Yes, that. you can prepare it. <laughs> bottles. When you get your personal mixing bottle, either you make it yourself or you get it from me directly. I usually mail in the United States because international mailing is super, super slow, even though domestic mailing now is getting slow, unfortunately. Yes. That's why I tend to do the do the direct consultations with follow-ups and we can do phone or email follow-ups and, um, and then people can buy their own remedies. And some people like to handle their own medicines you know, their own, yeah. their own things. So they like to do that. And so I, don't, I hope everyone can see it's available. this. It's kind of available in all the health stores and, and it's available pharmacy. health stores, Globally. it's available in pharmacies, it's available online. Um, I buy my personally, when I buy remedies, I go to my local health food store. But also you can buy them online. You can go to Nelson's Pharmacy in Boston. You can go to the Box Center and order them directly from England. Um, they're very, very easy to find. They're very yeah. easy to find. But oh, I don't know how much you, anyone can see this, but say the remedy I picked for today. Oh, it's my favorite, scleranthus, helping you make up your mind. Um, <laughs> so say I chose this remedy and I want to get it into this bottle. What I would do is I would fill 
this bottle with spring water, no bubbles, because spring water is alive. And then I would pour, I would put two drops of my chosen remedy in the bottle. And then I would take this four drops four times a day. So now so what if you don't have spring water? Say that again, please. What if you don't have spring water? What would then you, you use, use what you got. Of... Use what you got. Sorry? You use what you have. Use, okay. So yeah. boiled water is better or? Say that again. Water? Boiled water or distilled water, would that be better? Um, Distilled water or... probably would be better. Okay. You know, but if you don't have anything, that's okay. And you can also use the single remedy as a rescue remedy. You can put it on your wrists and rub it together. Okay. A little atomizer and spray it in the room, yes. which is great for traveling. You or if you know you want to clear the emotional dust bunnies from the air, you can spray your remedies in the room. <laughs> I do that with rescue remedy. Fortunately, they make rescue remedy now in a spray, which is brilliant. Okay. Because it's really easy. You can trowel with it and you can spray. Yeah, yeah, exactly. You can do this. You can spray yourself. You know, you can spray <laughs> the room. Uh, I've done that. I've done my aura spray. Definitely, you can spray yeah. your aura. Absolutely. You can spray the room when you're traveling or if something's happened. You can spray. You can even put um, rescue remedies, say, four drops in a bath and take a remedy bath. Yes. Put it in water, juice, or tea. I put it in my soup. You can even put these in coffee for all those folks that really need coffee. You can put your yeah. remedies in coffee <laughs> and it doesn't diminish it. You can also travel with your remedies. Um, the x-rays do not injure, harm, or diminish the effectiveness of any of the box flower remedies, including rescue remedy. So you can freely travel with these. I tend to, to put them in my carry bag because I use them on the plane. Um, a lot of the times I get tea when I fly. So I'll spray rescue remedy, spray um, in my tea and sip my remedy tea throughout the flight. You know, I do that. Yeah. Um, but the spray bottles are great because again, they're a quicker delivery system than having to open your mouth and put the drops in. You can do that too, but um, the spray is really great. And especially when you have kids. You know, if a kid's getting really fussy, if they're getting over anxious, if they're, you know, having an out of sorts day, you can, you know, spray the wrist with two two sprays of the rescue remedy spray and rub it together. You know, so it's it's really a really a wonderful delivery system. It really works really well. You can you can you can find ways of integrating the remedies in your daily life. The general concept for how much you take is four times a day and if you make your personal formula you know in here you take um four drops four times a day or more if you're just using a single remedy you would risk single remedy you would say put two drops of the single remedies in your water or juice or tea and slowly sip it and with the rescue remedy because it's a combination use four drops so there's a lot of ways of integrating this in your life in a very um, kind of straightforward, simple way. It was designed to give people a simple way of helping themselves and their families. Yes. That's now, really why, um, why did Dr. Buck choose 38? I mean, what was what is the magic number of 38? Because there's a way more plants and flowers out there that could be utilized. I don't exactly know how to answer why the magic number came to be 38. It's just what he did. And when he got to that, I don't think it's the number. Uh, if I think about it, it may not really be the number. It may be the what he chose mm. uh, and what they do. And yes. the, the healing virtues and the combinations of the healing virtues of each of the remedies. You know, I, I have a feeling if I think about it a moment that it's not the number, it's the what. So he may came across this grouping that he found to work from his own intuition and medical yeah. experience. Because a lot of how he worked at the at the 
finding the remedies, they really were also intuitively guided, you know, as well as a science background. So he did combine what we would now say in our language, the heart and the mind and our intuition and connected to our higher self. He did see people that way. He saw people as healed and whole, you know, he thought people could be, he knew people could be healed and whole and that health was not a long, vast, far away ending. It was in your hands right now. That's why when you read some of my writing, I use the phrase help is in your hands because I really feel that's true, that we are so amazingly and beautifully designed. Um, You know my story from before, so I've come through some very tough healing situations and, and illness situations this year, and I've come through it. You know, I'm here, I'm talking to you. We're meeting across this wonderful internet, and that's amazing to me. And our our own, even physical bodies, they're now discovering all these amazing connections to the electricity in our bodies and our heart and our mind. And we're all discussing about different microbiomes and the balance of that. With, yes, and to the vibration and balance as well. Right. And people are now discussing integrating light therapy and sound therapy, which the ancients have used for forever, um, for thousands of years in Ayurvedic medicine and Chinese medicine and Tibetan medicine and all these things. They've been around. It's just Mm -hmm. in our modern world, people are putting combinations of holistic ways that they're choosing things that are not harmful. They're choosing things that are sustainable. They're choosing things that respect themselves and respect the environment around them and the Bach flowers remedies and how they're made and what they do are very respectful so you know it's it's fits into how we're seeing the world now and it really fits very well even people say oh it's from the 30s the 30s is a long time ago but Dr. Bach created this And he was very far thinking in in his approach. You know, he was doing energy medicine at a time when people didn't really do that. Very much so. And as mentioned before about the fact that, yes, it may be from the 1930s, but it's actually way before that because, you know, plants and and herbs have been around for millennia. And, you know, their properties have been used over, you know, hundreds and thousands of years. Um, he, his is just like a rediscovery of the potential that these plants hold. Yes, definitely. Absolutely. For sure. And as a homeopathic physician, he knew what plants and herbs and situations, you know, were really part of that medical uh, way of doing things. Mm-hmm. You know? So that's why, that's one of the reasons why I still, after you think, well, after all this time, why would you be still using this? Now, you know, it's close to 40 years that I've been using the system for myself as a consumer to myself um, yes. before I started doing consultings in the in the early 80s. But because they work, because they're gentle, there's there's no side effects. And I feel better. I take them, I feel better. You know, it's like, it's really cool. You know, and yeah. um, when I was why working, you? yeah, exactly. Why wouldn't you? Um, and you know, when I work with my two dogs, and they got better, um, and I saw their emotional health change. When I worked with, consult other people's animals, as a bot practitioner for animals, and I saw the the things the other dogs, you know, changed and got better. Um, it's really, or I, I once, you know, I give my plants the flowers. I give my plants box flower remedies. If they feel like they're droopy or they feel like, you know, like when I got them home, I gave them rescue remedy. I have bamboos. When I put them in the water, everybody got rescue remedy, you know, because it's a change from where they were in the shops to where they were in my house. So um, in the trauma of traveling, I I, I gave them rescue remedy. So 
And have you not found that within the pet side of things and the animal side of things, that their healing is on a much quicker and deeper level because they don't have that mindset of control? Yes. Uh, I think for humans, though, the the, uh, the remedies can be on a very, very profound, deep level as well. But yeah. the dogs were, I, I saw the shift in them quicker. Yes. I did. I, like, Is it enough to go through that whole emotional turmoil that humans go through, in a sense? No. You know, no. People fight against it. And like, Is this really no. going to work? Am I going to get better? Or, you know, so you have that seesaw, whereas the pets don't have that. No. And, and, the even if you get a case that say a rescue case and there's been abuse involved um again you have a complicated situation again like peeling the layers of an onion you know you have yes. to look at the whole environment you need to look at the things around them you need to look at their physical environment how they're being managed in the home um where they came from before i have a whole set a slightly different set of indicators that I use as as a um, as trained in animal behavior to decode the remedies for animals than I do a little bit for people because um, unless you put the element of animal animal communication within the story um, you just have to go by what you see and go by what the people are telling you because the other element of working with animals is you work with their people. So you're getting a story filtered through the people, you know, and sometimes you see the animal, hopefully all the time, sometimes you don't, sometimes they're hiding, sometimes this. So it's a slightly different um, dimension of working, you know, and then you have the extra vet component because I work with people's vets as well when I do yes. the animal consults. So you have a little bit more of a wider, I'm not a one-on-one, -on -one, it's more more people are involved, including the animal. Um, so it's a little bit of more of a detailed way of working. Finding me for animal is still the same. You email me, we set up an appointment, and then we go from there and you give me your vet information, I contact the vet. Because the vet is part of the animal circle of care. So they need to know what remedies um, the animal is taking because that becomes part of the animal circle of care when I become part of the animal circle of care. So it's a little bit extra, but the whole idea is the same. They, yeah. you figure out between the conferences that we have and the, and the conversations we have and the observations that I do, and then together we'll put together a formula. And with, with animals, um, my mentor said to use one to four in a mixing bottle, because then you can track very clearly what the changes are. Now, you can also do that for yourself as a person, especially when you're starting out. You can read every single remedy indication and think it's you. You know? Yeah. Absolutely, without a doubt. You're right. Let's all take all 38 now because I've got <laughs> something wrong with me in all yeah. 38. And actually, <laughs> there's a story that goes that Dr. Bad actually, he actually did that. He put all 38 and he took them. And he discovered by doing that that it didn't really work. Then you do have to work on it on an individual Overload. basis. And you do have to make a combination on an individual basis and discussing it exactly. with someone, you know, that way. Yeah, you can't cover all your bets. You know, you can't hedge all your bets. <laughs> but I love the fact that he actually tried it. <laughs> and found well, he was not really to get it effective. Though, wasn't he? You know, in, in, in self-discovery, you have to try what you're discovering in a sense. Yes. And the way that I like to work with people, I like to help them to understand what remedies they're taking and why, and what the potential pathway will be um, mm. in the result. Because I feel that, again, we're talking about building our wholesome lives and communicating with ourselves and communicating with others. If we know how to communicate better, the world would be a more happier place and a more peaceful place and more lighted place, more joyful place. So I like, I, I always work with the clients um, to know what they're taking and why. I don't just have a conversation 
and make a bottle of hand with them when they have no, they don't have any understanding of what it is. No, part of my consultation is to meet their expectations and help them understand what they're doing. And then eventually they can do it for themselves. You know, they can do it for themselves, which is the, I think part of the point. So I can have long-term clients, which I do, and I can have short-term clients, which I do, but both work. You know, it's what helps exactly. that person and what meets their needs. Exactly. Sorry, I had the cat passing by. <laughs> oh, is that what that was? Hi, <laughs> cat. Hi. We're talking about animals. That's completely perfect. That's it. And he, he's now putting himself right next to me, um, on literally almost on top of the keyboard. <laughs> Oh, fun. You must sense you must sense the healing happening. <laughs> I guess so. That's really nice. I love that. That's really fun. <laughs> well, Jennifer, you know, we could really chat until the cows come home. Um, yes, we because can. There's so much, and we've only just cracked the surface. So um, we might even look at a part three. So, oh, that um, would be wonderful. Thank you. I'll have to watch the space. And um, it's always been such a pleasure to listen to you. You're so incredibly knowledgeable and it just flows out of you like it was born from you in a sense. So <laughs> thank you for, for the enlightenment because I certainly, I, I, I know a bit about this stuff, but I am being a lot more empowered and educated um, in our conversation. So thank you for that. Hi, you Thank you. Thank you. That touches my heart. Thank you very much. I love it. No, yeah, you're very welcome. Thank you more. You know, if people want to, if they want to make a comment and, you know, hopefully a happy one and say if there's a subject that they want me to talk about or if there's a question, exactly. you know, please, um, please feel free if that's okay with you to, yes. to do so, you know. Definitely. Um, um, and if anybody wants to get hold of Jennifer, um, I'll have her contact details in the description below the video and um, we will more than be happy to accept any comments or questions for our next session and is it just helps us to better understand the journey we're taking at the moment because everybody is trying to find the alternatives to living a much more holistic and healthy life yes indeed and it's wonderful i i'm so heartened that people are really honestly doing this millions and millions of people all over the world are coming together yeah. to find a better pathway for themselves, for their families. And really, oddly, interestingly enough, despite what the news might say, for our planet and for our governments and for all kinds of things. Exactly. So it's, wonder it's a wonderful time to be here. You know, everybody have good hope that if you're here, it's a wonderful time to be here. And if you are struggling yeah. with, with illnesses and stuff, um, know that there's really techniques and people and things that you yes. can do to find your wholeness exactly it, it's that wonderful expression be the change you want to see in the world so yes. it has to start with us because we can't expect other people to do the change and we have to also change as well yes indeed and the remedies will help people do that that's what they're exactly. here for gives them a boost and gives them the, the courage and the clarity they need <laughs> yeah to step into a new way of being which is i think what we're looking for Yes, yes. Well, I think so. it's, it's like a self-empowerment. You know? It's a, a sense of self-empowerment. Definitely, definitely a sense of self-empowerment. Yep, right in your hands. Definitely. Fantastic. So on that note, uh, please feel free to click like and subscribe to the channel for any upcoming videos and talks with myself and Jennifer and any of my other um, wonderful speakers that I have on a weekly basis. And I want to say thank you, everybody. So thank you, Jennifer, for joining us. And we look forward to part welcome. three. Uh, you're very welcome. It's really a pleasure to be back.